Good morning, YouTube. So, it's been a minute um, since I've gotten on here. I have since then gotten a new phone, so the voice should be much better. Today, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just going to sit on the porch. It's um, pretty early in the morning. Paul's off to a side job this morning, so he'll be gone most of the day. But uh, I want to talk to you guys about the things that I tell my customers if I know that they're going into their first time with pig owning or pig breeding, anything like that. It's going to kind of cover the basics. We won't get specific on breeds. I will tell you a little bit of background information on us. We have been raising pork and pigs professionally for about six years we have sold we've been licensed to sell cuts of pork we've shipped our meat um, to customers out of state we have bred pigs sold piglets uh, right now we do mostly holes and halves of pork so we have done uh, really anything you can do with pigs and we've owned oh my gosh we've owned Yorkshires Durox Mulefoots uh, old spots, large blacks. We've had a couple of Mangalitsas come through, a couple of American guinea hogs come through, Herefords, and now we are registered Idaho pasture pig breeders. So we've done all the things and we've um, raised all of the breeds from the really big quick growing ones to the really slow ones. And I like to make sure that my first time customers are prepared going into this because um, pig owning it sounds simple, especially if you're just raising feeders, right? You're raising them for six months, sending them to butcher, you're done. But there's a few things that are good to know to make your life easier because you can very quickly be turned off of the idea of raising pigs when things start to go wrong. We are talking about very large animals that can do a lot of damage um, and can be aggressive. So knowing these things that I'm about to tell you will kind of help uh, make the process easier. The first thing I want you to do at all when you are like, we're going to raise pigs this year, as soon as you know when you're going to get that piglet, make your butcher appointment. Find a good butcher and make your appointment immediately. Before you even go get the piglet, make the appointment. Because I don't know how it is elsewhere, but here in Maine, uh, we... Are, we have butchers that are booked out two years. You know, most of them are booked out to the next year or at least seven to eight months out. So as soon as you know when you're going to be looking to send that pig in, you really want to make that butcher appointment and some tips on picking a butcher. If a butcher, uh, first, um, if you can, find like a Facebook page for them or whatever and look for reviews, look for, um, you know, ask around on your local livestock pages. Has anybody used this butcher? What do you think? The second thing if a butcher doesn't give you a piece of paper, a cutting instruction sheet, and that, you know, asks you how you want things cut and um, how you want things, what flavor sausage you want, all of those things, if you're not getting any prompt from your butcher on how you want your animal cut up, don't, don't use that butcher, okay? Because obviously they don't care how you want your animal cut up. They're going to do it their way. And in my opinion, a butcher that doesn't care about how you want your animal cut up that you paid to raise uh, is not a butcher that can be trusted. I prefer a butcher that vacuum seals everything. It's just, uh, the meat just stays better that way, in my opinion. It stays better longer. Now, we butcher kind of everything ourselves here now. We just started doing that like two years ago. Second thing that you want to evaluate before you big bring before you bring the piglet home is you want to evaluate what type of fencing you're using, what type of area you're gonna have them in. Very quickly, pigs become strong enough to break fences, to bend fences, to dig underneath them. The things that have worked best for us, uh, a pallet fence does work well. If you have the carpentry knowledge to, um, do things like corner braces and whatnot and you really know uh, where to put the screws in so that it's actually going to hold together. 
because a weak seam between two pallets can be pushed open very easily by, um, you know, a 150 pound pig. The pallet fence uh, thing does work. It's not the prettiest, but we have used it numerous times, especially on the older property. The other thing that does seem to work very well, uh, at least for us, is uh, we do enjoy the cattle or hog panels that you get at like your feed store. Specifically, we get them at Tractor Supply. Those work well if they are put very much flush with the ground. Like you wanna put your foot on them and push them down before you uh, attach them to whatever you're using for a post. Then the other thing that you need to be concerned about with those is how you're attaching them to the post. Uh, we had some people message me because they used uh, zip ties to attach them to the posts. And the, you know, the pigs broke the zip ties. We used like a heavy duty wire and, you know, wrapped it around the post and through the panel and then twisted it real tight. And we did it quite often all the way down uh, so that it was secure, especially on the bottom. If you can secure that bottom real tight, then they won't think they can get out and they'll leave it alone. As soon as they feel a little give, they're going to push that area as hard as they can until they can figure out how to get out of it. So that theory worked well for us. Um, I did enjoy that. Hog and cattle panels are really expensive. So what we are using here is we are actually using, I can't remember if it's called sheep or cattle fencing. I don't remember what it's called. I'm going to leave the link below though so you can find it. We got it at Tractor Supply. It was less than a dollar per foot, which for fencing is super cheap. It is a panel style fencing, but it's not um, like the cattle panels. You know, it's not rugged. It's, it's flexible. So we ran that because here our pastures are going to be interchangeable between the sheep and the pigs and obviously something like that will keep the sheep in no problem. It's also actually keeping the cattle in really well too. We have one line of it with the cattle and they're staying in it as well so we really like it. So we're running that and then for the pig's sake because it is flexible and so if, again if they feel that give they will they will get through it. We're running we ran one strand of electric wire about six to eight inches off the ground all the way around the bottom and that just keeps the pigs away from pushing that edge and that system is working the best that we've ever had it work so i'll drop that fencing below but if you're going to use that for your pigs run that electric wire around the bottom and that doesn't take long to do that's pretty easy um the most costly thing that's going to be about that is the t-posts those metal t-posts those metal T-posts cost a lot of money, but you could easily also use um, cedar posts, fence posts, if you can get them locally to you. We can go down back and, and cut posts, so we have that option as well. So butcher appointment and uh, strong fences, those are the first two things that I always talk to customers about, and those are usually the first two things that they ask about as well, especially the fencing. Um, as far as shelter for pigs, you're really just, we're going to build a frame houses in each of the pig pastures uh, so that we don't have to move housing and don't have to build big barns but we have one central like barn um, connected to one of the pastures that will have farrowing stalls and lambing stalls and stuff like that but as far as the feeders and the boars as long as they have a big enough a-frame and a bale of straw in there even our main winters here that get pretty chilly uh, so the back will probably be closed off on most of those a-frames so that will be plenty enough for them pigs are really hardy animals even in the super cold they just need good bedding and three walls and they're good to go now one of the things that I get asked about a lot um, that I wasn't really concerned about putting in this video but I do get asked it a lot so I'll, I'll touch base on it really quick is feeding now Usually when you get pigs for the first time, you're just going into feeders and I recommend not jumping into pigs with breeders. I, it's probably an 80% turnaround rate when people do that, when they, their first pigs they ever raise are intentional breeders. Uh, that never goes well. Get your feeders and figure out if you even like raising pigs and do a practice run so you can test your fences and whatnot. But feed for feeders my method that I like to do, I dump grain in the trough and I go back a few minutes later and if they have cleaned it all up, then I know that I need to add a little bit more to the feed 
um, that night or the next day. So I always want them to have just a little bit left over from when their bellies are full. And this is going to keep your feeders on top of feed, which obviously helps them grow a little quicker. Now, if you're raising like a super lardy pig, uh, like the Cooney Coonies, which is what the uh, Idaho pasture pigs were developed out of, you want to be a little more careful about the free feeding. You might want to keep them on a stricter diet, but you'll have to touch base with somebody who's familiarized with those breeds. But if we're talking your Yorkshire Durox, just your quick lean pigs that you're trying to get done in, you know, four to six months, that's how I recommend it. I recommend giving them just a little bit more than when their bellies are full. And then that keeps them on top of feed and it keeps them from being bored. The last thing I want to touch base on that I cannot stress enough, this is the most important one. Spend time with your pigs. Pigs, contrary to popular belief and how our grandparents did it, pigs should not be, you know, throw feed at them twice a day keep them in a, a 10 by 10, 12 by 12 area, call it good, I'll load them on the trailer at six months. When I see people raise pigs that way, because that's what they think they're supposed to do, that was the norm for generations and generations, that's how you raised pigs. I also see those people complaining, my pig ate my chicken that accidentally flew in the pen. My pig bit my kid when they were trying to feed them. My pig bit me. They're super aggressive. We can't get them on the trailer. Pigs can easily, very, very quickly go from domesticated to non-domesticated. Um, and they can go both ways, even your super commercial breeds like your Yorkshires and Durox. Every single time I go out in that barn, I am petting, talking to whatever pig happens to be inside in the stall. Every time I'm out in the pasture, my pigs are following me around saying hi. They know they can do that. They know that I'm the caretaker, that I'm the leader. Even my boars, I, I can scratch my boars wherever I want to. Pigs need to be handled. You will not catch any of my pigs. I don't care what breed they are. You will not catch any of my pigs eating a chicken, going after a smaller animal. My piglets can be in with the boars. I've never had a boar that was aggressive towards piglets. Pigs are so similar to our domesticated pets, like our dogs and whatnot, in the sense that the more time you spend handling them, the much easier they're going to be to handle, to move around. I can load my feeders onto a trailer right now if I had to. So really, really, really stress um, handling the pigs, talking to them, spending a few minutes with them. That's all it takes is a few minutes every day. So those are the things that I always talk to people about, talk to my customers about. Um, those are the questions I get asked the most on all of those topics. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have any more questions, comment below. Re you can contact us on Facebook or on Instagram. If you have specific questions, I'm always here to answer them. We also vet a lot of our pigs um, ourselves. Uh, so if you have any illness questions, please reach out. So I hope this video helped. Thank you guys for stopping in. Don't forget to subscribe, to share with your friends who may be getting ready to raise pigs. And we will talk very soon. Happy homesteading.